two years ago we set out to um, build the car in a format where it stays tr true to Pro Street, but the endeavour was to be outright number one. We were hoping to um, actually get the record at GDR Festival, but we just fell a little bit short. We gave, we gave it our all, and we were like, I think, um, one one hundredth of a second out. And on the 10th of June, we ran a 637 at 224.7 mile an hour or something. <laughs> It was our goal to be number one outright, GDR full stop worldwide. It was more of a relief because we knew we had it in it. It was just a matter of getting it all to work. The problem with drag racing is if you don't get the first 60 foot ride, then the 330, then the half track, then back end it, okay, all happening at the same time, just never gonna happen. So we got the power. I mean, we've got our 3000 horsepower engine package here that we're still developing and we're not gonna stop because we've got the Pro Mod coming out soon. Yes, we finally did it. All the hard work, the, the boys, the late nights, the developing, the, the engine swapped, all the problems we went through to get there. CRD to us obviously is who we are. Okay, and for it for us to become number one outright just means that we're best GDR workshop in the world. If you don't have rivalry, okay, then you're not really working towards or trying to, like you don't have goals, you, don't, you know what I mean? You need goals, you need to have ambition, you need to have drive, and I think having that rivalry makes it, makes it happen. We've been, I think, number one in the pro street category for a while now. It was on and off for a while up until a couple of years ago, and then we've just kept striving forward. But we had our eyes set on Metro. 647 was the number that, and the target that we had, and now we're on a 637, we're gonna keep going. We have seen, improvements every time we go out, everything we, every time we change. So not, not everything we do works, but that's fine. That's part of what needs to happen. So the sort of changes that we've done to join over the years or the evolution of the, of the car. Prior to COVID, I think we were at 686, then we ran a 66, then we ran the 65 during COVID. So just before that gap between COVID one lockdown and COVID two, we rebuilt the car. We mainly focused on setup. We mainly focused on getting the rear end suspension changes to work and then we came out with a car that we felt could launch and run to the 330 at the time frame that at the times that we wanted it to to be able to achieve the back end it was more focusing on changes to the setup to make it work better and be consistent because if you don't have consistency no matter what changes you have or, or can or can do or power you produce you're not able to really get the best out of it there's nothing worse than going to the line once making it work and then not be able to repeat it for the next two months so we had to get over that make the car consistent and then we can start making the tweaks, making it all work, you know, like improving in certain areas and, and that's what we did. Up until the time we ran a 657, we still had the ProMod 98 precision turbo. At that time, we also had the standard guards front and rear. We knew that to get consistency in the, on the start line and to the 330, that we had to make some changes to the rear end. By putting the wider guards, on the car, which had to be carbon, otherwise we would have had to remanufacture all the, all the stuff. We were able to fit a 12 inch custom rim, also with the tweaks that we did with the suspension. So at the same time did the front guards. In total, just for the rumour mill, we probably saved around 15 kilos all up, which really isn't all that much considering what we did. You get to a point where weight isn't really your enemy, because I'm gonna jump ahead now and say, when we ran the 637, up until then, we were having wheelie issues. So we'd get off the line and the car would wheelie every time and we weren't able to tame or control the power that we, were need, that we needed to throw at it. So we ended up putting 30 kilos of weight in the front end. So under the intercooler, we put 30 kilos or just behind it of weight. Without that, there's no way we would have been able to get the car settled and run the time that it did. It's not just all about taking weight out. Sometimes you need to add weight back in, but in the right place. And that's very important in drag racing. I'm gonna ask you this question. Is a GDR, R32 in particular, a drag car? It's not. Okay, so it started life as a street car. So how far do you want to take it? So for me, keeping as much of its heritage, okay, and standard components as we can, obviously go to the heart of what we, lo what, what we love around here. The way I designed the car, the way I wanted to build the car over the years, is more about functionality. So anything that you see carbon is more about functionality. 
If I was to go through the car and explain to you what's still true to an R32 GDR, you'll be surprised. We still have a standard floor, we still have a standard chassis, we still have the, the, the strut towers, even little things like the engine mounts. We don't have engine plates, we still have the rear firewall, we still have the bonnet latch, you know what I mean? Because I don't like bonnet pins and I like when the car's back together to, be, to look like a GDR. The standard wing, okay, even though it's like uh, fiberglass, it's still standard. From a distance, it looks exactly the same as any other GDR, just like yours, okay? but. The changes I've made is more for functionality. And even now the front, because we've put a new intercooler, it's blocked at the front. So these things are all for functionality. So we still have all the lights at work, rear lights, front lights, indicators. Um, I've still got power windows, glass windows, front and rear. There's a lot of the original car retained and the majority of it that has been changed is for, honestly for functionality. Even the dash that I changed, I changed it because we had to modify things to put the MoTeC and run the car the way we need to. It's no secret that we've developed a lot of things on the car, in particular, Obviously the suspension, the um, cross member side of it, because the way this car launches and the 1060 foot that it does wouldn't happen otherwise. The custom rear end that, we, that we've done for it still uses the standard GDR pickup points. We still use standard um, arms, lower and upper. We still use a lot of the traditional componentry. However, most of them are modified, but the pickup points are all still where they started off as, because at the end of the day, Nissan didn't get it wrong. All we're doing is improving and making things better for it to work in how we, and for, for what we need. Same, same with the front. I mean, the shock position is still the same, even though the cross member is developed in aftermarket, but that's only for strength, reliability, you know what I mean, and to get the best out of the car steering. Anything we rebuild on it, everything that we've changed on it is mainly to get the car to work better at the speeds that we're running at. I mean, it's stupid. We never endeavoured or thought that originally that we were going to run this quick. You know, it's unheard of, but that's fine. At the end of the day, we're enjoying it. It's what we do, it's what we want to do, and we're going to continue doing. As far as the engine's concerned, it is a bill of block. Everyone knows that, there's no secret. We use methanol. It's still the standard RB crank, but it's the wide journal version that that Nido make. It showed us that we're able to throw a lot more power consistently at it. The rods are alloy. We use alloy rods, obviously, and the whole package, okay, works with what power we're throwing at it. So the development, again, all comes back to functionality. Things that we've done differently now versus before. We've gone from an air-to-air -air intercooler to a water-to-air intercooler that CPC has done for us. We've got one of their CPC custom intake manifolds and we've developed a 24 injector setup for it because we're not stopping where we are. I mean, we're gonna keep going. And we want the car to be designed or to be built or engineered around more and more horsepower. We're not gonna stop at 3,000. We're gonna keep going because at the end of the day, if we're really going to butt heads with the best and the quickest in the world, we need to have componentry and the package that's going to be able to produce that. We ran the 6.5 with a 98 turbo. Now we've put a 110. So we've seen a massive gain, but only when we're able to get that turbo to work first. If we can get it to, get it to work to half track, why are we going to push it back end? Now that we've got it consistently working off the line, as good if not better than what we had with the 98, now we can start pushing it. I don't know what's going to happen next because they don't make a bigger turbo than a 110, but there's a few things floating in the background that obviously we're working on to, to, to work with, like to, to, to try and implement very soon. As far as CID is concerned, the development that we do with Jun obviously trickles down through all the customers' cars that want to go fast and are building, building cars. Pete's a perfect, perfect example. How many cars do you know out there and run a six second pass on their second, uh, on their second hit? You get what I'm saying? So when we evolve and develop the package here, it filters down through the guys. We've got guys coming out with cars very soon that are looking to run deep, if not high sixes, um, in true street form because that's what okay, they were able to do because we've got the platform working here. Then you've got obviously the, the GOAT. The GOAT was the first true street car that ran a seven with a manual. If it wasn't for, I think, the development that the business has done with John, there's no chance that that would have happened and filtered down through the rest of the guys because they're making these cars work with turbo sizes that are unheard of for a street car. But you know what? When driven, they still work. That a long time ago that you never set a limit okay because there really isn't any limits while you're developing while you're plowing ahead trying to go faster we ran a 6.3 even though we struggled to get there when it when we did run it 
it was it felt relatively easy because it just it just worked. Now it's a matter of okay, how do we continue evolving that? We 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 need to be consistently through six threes, and then look at how to tweak that to get the increments down better so that we can hopefully run into the six twos. For us, it's about a tenth at a time. We're not here to try and jump two three tenths and you know make all these promises and you know and in la la land. We want to do it a step at a time the way we need to uh, consistently so that what we learn from it, with the knowledge that we gain, we can one, filter it down into the workshop with other cars, but two, also make sure that it's reliable because without reliability, we've got nothing. We were starting to see at high boost, a lot of air intake temps that were just out of control. That's all horsepower, that's reliability. You know, every, every, every God knows how many runs, we have to swap the head. Okay, why? Because with the, with the intake, if the intakes are too high, the EGTs are gonna be through the roof, you can't control it. Bang, you, you torch the head. It's a normal thing in drag racing. But now we've said, you know what, stuff it. We have to put weight in the front anyway, replace it with the water to air, keep evolving the car, keep playing forward. It's no secret. I'm here to show everyone exactly what we do, okay, why we've done it, okay, and how we're gonna keep going forward. As far as the horsepower difference, we've just run it up on a dyno for tuning purposes. We haven't really looked at it from a back-to-back -back point of view, but I can tell you that we've definitely improved on the power front. At 10%-ish. You know, that's probably a, a, a true figure. So I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say a number, rather than just say, when we go to the racetrack and we finally re, like, obviously because the power curve is gonna change, it's coming in a lot differently and all the rest of it. Once we get that all sorted again, then we'll see what it does. We're gonna keep developing this car, keep pushing forward as hard as we can up until the Pro Mod comes out. We're not gonna park it, but we may slow down a little bit so we can focus on the Pro Mod. But obviously everything that we're doing here, it's gonna move forward. It's very difficult to give a time frame for the Pro Mod. It's work in progress. Obviously, we have Craig at SCF Race Cars um, building it. As far as what we're doing with this, as I said, we're not stopping. Because the bottom line is I'm happy, but not content.